Silent PC gaming. Is it possible? Let's find out. Hey, how is it going guys? Robin here on Chips Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for gaming on this channel. You'll find PC components, tech gadgets and console accessories as well as product reviews. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any uploads on my end. Now with that out of the way, is it possible to run the Ryzen 2400G completely passive? In other words, is it possible to run a fairly popular gaming PC without any moving parts whatsoever. Now, if you want to learn more about this cooler, the Arctic Alpine AM4 Passive, or what specs the Ryzen 2400G rocks, I made separate videos on that in the past. I'll link those videos up down below for you guys. Now, what I can say though is that this piece of heatsink is specified to 35 watt TDP, which is a number that basically determines how much heat in terms of wattage the cooler is able to handle. AMD has only released two models that are supported by this cooler, the 2400GE and the 2400GE, which is this specific CPUs smaller brothers. <laughs> Both these models has pretty much the same specs as the 2400G but they are running in fairly slower megahertz speeds compared to the Ryzen G. Now the only problem with the, both these APUs is that uh, well <laughs> you're not able to buy them and since they have officially been out since the end of April I'm not so sure we will ever see them being sold sold to consumers either. It seems like they are only available for the OAM market, which is a bummer and it also makes them irrelevant. Now this particular CPU, the 2400G is specified by AMD to 65 watts, which means that without doing any modification whatsoever, this cooler will not be able to handle the heat. However, let's say we do some modifications. Let's say we lower the power coming from the CPU itself, that will also lower the output temperature as well. Now would the Alpine Passive then be able to cool the CPU? Now that is the question and yeah that is a challenge as well. Challenge accepted. And so it began. Now in order to figure out what stock temps we're getting and yeah to figure out if it's even worth bothering tossing the stock cooler out for the passive one we need to figure out what temperatures we're getting in stock settings with the stock cooler now right out of the box no messing with settings whatsoever completely stocks in other words with the breath spire cooler we're seeing temperatures of 74 degrees after a few rounds in the torture test in prime 95 now let's take that number and keep it in mind now taking a look at rise and monster CPU voltage seems to jump between 1.35 to 1.37 volt. Remember clock speeds as well as voltage are strongly correlated with temperatures. Now this might seem like a far-fetched goal but it would be quite cool if we would have been able to run the CPU 100% passive. So yeah let's find out. We need to do something with the voltage of course. So according to AMD we should be able to go a little bit lower than the stock voltage so we need to scale back on it but before we do anything about voltage we need to change coolers first and boom just like that we have successfully changed coolers so right now we got the uh, the arctic alpine am4 passive in place and as you can see guys without touching anything without any modding whatsoever temps are doing pretty fine to be honest now don't be fooled here guys, processors now they use something called speed step, also known as cool and quiet, also known as turbo core. AMD and Intel have changed names over the years. What this feature does is that it basically clocks down the CPU when
then it's idling which is exactly what is happening right now if we open up a torture test in prime 95 you will see temps run away pretty rapidly this is gonna get out of control rather quickly so at stock settings this is no go but let's say we mod the vault a bit let's say we scale back on the settings just by a little would that be enough to keep the system from reaching let's say 80 degrees 80 degrees is a nice goal isn't it guys that means we're at least 15 degrees from throttling and also remember guys the stress and temps the amount of stress and temperatures you're creating from a torture test is unreal they're not going to represent the temperatures you will see when you're gaming let's say that again you won't put this amount of stress on your cpu on a typical gaming session all right so i've decided to scale back on the voltage a bit more specifically to 1.00 blank and i'm happy to say that in my case this is perfectly fine now i am seeing temps as high as 80 degrees during heavy stress testing but when i'm gaming it won't ever go over the 75 degree mark in the n zxt h 340i case and right now we got two fans running at around 500 rpm so nothing fancy here whatsoever now i gotta say guys i'm pretty happy with the results and we haven't gained any frames per second in this video but who cares really we have successfully managed to run the cpu completely 100 passive and no noise whatsoever and yeah that's pretty damn cool in my opinion now if you want to get to learn what cooler this is i made a separate video on it i'll link that video down below for you guys and if you want to check the cooler out in question more specific details for you guys below as well thanks to arctic for sending me this cooler now now, gotta say guys i'm not getting paid by arctic or anything here just to clarify things i gotta say guys been running a wide range of popular games on it all of which have run perfectly fine on this particular setup temperatures i'm seeing are ranging between 40 and 75 celsius tops keep in mind even though this is an apu and i am able to use the onboard vega graphics to play on i'm currently using a dedicated the gtx 970 time to uh summarize this here is the bottom line guys now while it is possible to go completely silent it might not be worth it depending on what case and game you're playing in my particular case i can run my case fans in such low speed that they're literally silent so for me i rather have my fans spinning in lower rpm than have them completely turned off that way i don't have to undervolt the cpu so much now on the flip side if you're planning on building a gaming rig with this cooler in a smaller case without fans you're definitely gonna have to undervolt this apu a lot more you might be able to run games without running too hot but as soon as you jump into any stress test or whatever temps will become impossible to handle the cooler is simply not big enough so it's definitely something to have in mind the major disadvantage advantage with undervolting is that you're giving up a few frames which is a trade-off you gotta be aware of if you want to go this route down and the end of the day do i find it worth it if your main goal is to uh, go 100 silent yes you will lose a few frames now if you're more interested to eke out a few more frames out of your system and you don't prioritize noise then there's definitely better options out there for you now guys i'm interested to know how picky are you about noise in general i for example didn't care much about noise a few years ago but then i discovered the world of noise dampening it got me started nowadays i cannot stand noisy fans and vibrating mechanical hard drives <laughs> but this video was meant towards you guys that want to build something super small where big tower coolers won't fit basically now hopefully this video have helped you out a little but yeah that's gotta cut it for this one thank you so much for watching this video guys until next time have an awesome day all right bye